Lesson 26 has two parts. The first part is on using manipulatives to reduce fractions, and the second part is on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Now, reducing, I'll also call that simplifying sometimes. So we'll sometimes use those words interchangeably, reducing and simplifying. If you don't have them close to you, go ahead and get your fraction manipulatives out both your one-half, one-fourth, and one-eighth pieces, and your one-third, one-sixth, and one-twelfth pieces. Now, on the board, I've drawn a quarter of a circle, 25% of a circle. Now, there's a couple of other different ways we can think about a quarter of a circle. We could have three one-twelfth pieces. That makes up a quarter. Or three-twelfths, or two one-eighth pieces. That equals one-fourth as well. And so we could write one-fourth equals three-twelfths equals two-eighths. All those fractions are equal to each other. I mean, it's obvious by our parts of a circle, the way we have our fraction manipulatives and the way we can combine those and, and lay a one-fourth piece on top of three one-twelfth pieces as well as on top of two one-eighth pieces, and they all are the same. What we mean when we talk about reducing or simplifying a fraction, we would use the one that uses the least number of pieces. So if we, were, if we had a problem and maybe we had two-eighths or three-twelfths for an answer, we would want to reduce it or simplify it to one-fourth. That's the fraction that uses the least number of pieces. Now, this might get confusing because all of those answers are equal, so it seems like all of those answers would, would be correct. It wouldn't matter which way you wrote one-fourth. But sometimes in math we just accept a certain way being the correct way to do it. And we always want to try to reduce fractions in math. That's the correct way when we have a, a math fraction that we could reduce. We should always do that, reduce it to its simplest form. Let's do some practice on this. Practice problem A. Reduce this, or simplify this, 6 8 See if you can reduce that. 9 1 12th pieces is the same thing as 6 1 8th pieces, so, but that's not the simplest form. So we don't want to say 9 twelfths would be the answer. 3 1 4th pieces, that would be the least number of pieces we would need to represent 6 eighths, and so that would be the correct way to write that, 3 fourths. That would be the simplified or reduced form of 6 eighths. Let's try another one, 10 twelfths. Well, that we could use 5 1 sixth pieces. Just think about it to yourself. One one sixth piece equals two one twelfth piece pieces. So five one sixth pieces equals ten one twelfth pieces, and so that would be five sixth. That would be our answer there. Well, let's continue on. Let's go ahead and do the second part of this lesson on adding and subtracting mixed numbers. I think the best way to learn about this is just to do some practice problems. So let's go ahead and do one. Let's add three and a half percent plus three and a half percent. Now on a mixed number, there's a whole number part and a fraction part to it. So one way you can do these is to add the whole number parts first. So we could add three plus three that equals 6, and then we could add half plus half. Well, if you want to, just think about that. You've got half a circle and then another half a circle. You add those together, that makes a whole circle or one circle. So half plus half, that's not two halves. We won't write that two halves. Basically, what we're doing there is reducing to one circle or one whole circle. Now we have to add those together, the 6 and the 1, and so our answer would be 
6 plus 1 equals 7 percent. So keep that in mind there. That's another form of reducing is when you end up with a whole. When the numerator and the denominator are the same number, that's equal to one or one whole item. Let's try another one of these. Let's add 15 and one-third percent plus 51 and two-thirds percent. Okay, again, what we'll do is add the whole numbers first, 15 and 51, that would give us 66, and then we'll add the fraction parts, one-third plus two-thirds. We have common denominators, we can add the numerators together, we get three-thirds. That simplifies or reduces to one, and so now we add 66 plus one, that equals 67 percent. Let's just add a couple of numbers. They don't have percents after them. Three and one-fourth. Plus three and two-fourths. Let's just try to do this one in our head. Add the whole number of parts in our head. 3 plus 3 is 6. Add the fraction parts 1 fourth plus 2 fourth. That would be 3 fourths. 6 and 3 fourths. So that's our answer. Let's try one more problem with mixed numbers. Jacob lives 3 and 1 eighth miles from the beach. Jacob rode his bike to the beach and back. How far did he ride? Well, this is a story problem. It's a sum and then some more story problem because he rode to the beach. He lives three and one-eighth miles from the beach, so he rode his bike to the beach and then he rode back home. So we'd be adding those three and one-eighth plus three and one-eighth. So let's add the whole number parts there. Three plus three is six. And then let's add the two fractions, 1 8 and 1 8 is 2 8. 6 and 2 8. Now, let's think about that. 2 8, that's not the most simplified or reduced form of that fraction. There are two 1 8 in 1 1 4. And so we really need to write this 6 and 1 4. And then we could also write miles after that. We'll just abbreviate it M I. Six and one-fourth miles. Now we haven't done a subtraction problem using mixed numbers yet, so let's do one of those. You work them the same way as you do the addition problems. You subtract the whole number parts, then you subtract the fraction parts. And so let's do this problem. One and six-eighths minus one and three-eighths. Subtract the whole number parts. One minus one is zero. So we just have zero there. We don't write anything. We don't really need to write the zero, but let's just go ahead and put it down. And then six eighths minus three eighths, that would be three eighths. So keep this in mind on a problem like this. You don't write the answer zero and three eighths. You can just erase that zero there. You just pretend like it's not there. And you just write your answer. You just have to write the fraction part. There is no whole number part to that answer. Okay, well that's all for lesson 26.